Hey there class, this is uh, Professor Nick Sinski at UNC Charlotte, and uh, this is part two of week three for digital uh, foundations. Uh, we're looking at rhinoceros, and we're looking at taking uh, site sections, taking 2D lines from um, a 3D model. Okay. And last time I asked you guys to complete uh, a 3D site topo, so I assume you have something that looks kind of like this. And uh, I'm going to begin by talking about you know, how you get a section uh, from the site. And um, you know, I would probably start in the top view and turn on some layers so that we understand um, you know, where we want to take a section from. And in this case, if I turn on the cemetery roads, you know, our, our two sites are you know, this lower site here and this upper triangular site. So it might be important to take a section you know, through this site or across this way or maybe across you know, the road or maybe a, a section that goes through both sites. So you know, using the, uh, the 2D lines from AutoCAD to kind of guide us in that and where we take a section. And uh, to take a section in, in Rhinoceros is a tool called Section. Type in section. And um, you um, basically choose the objects that you want to cut a section through. And in this case, we just have the site object. And uh, it's as easy as drawing a line. So you, you pick one point, pick another point, and it would draw a section. So if I wanted to draw a section through both sites, I would click a point here and a point uh, here. And that yellow line is uh, the section that we drew. Okay, and uh, when you're done with the tool, you just press enter, and uh, that'll close the tool out. Um, it might be helpful to make a layer, make a new layer for <coughs> your sections. And you can um, you know, move that layer um, out, and um, there you go. So it's its own layer. Okay, and then I can when the object selected, <coughs> press F3. Um, to turn on the properties panel and pick that line and change the layer to sections. Okay. Now if I hide or turn off my site and I look at that line, you can see that it's actually created the section. You can see that the slope it actually rises a bit in that site and then it actually begins to taper down as it goes towards this other site here. Remember these are 2D lines up here, the orange lines, but the black line is a section line that we cut. Okay. So when you've got a line, we actually want to get it out to um, Adobe Illustrator. And actually while I'm working, I'm going to go ahead and launch Illustrator because um, it'll take a second. And uh, but the problem is, is that you know we, we want to export that line. Um, the line, uh, we're going to convert it to 2D. We actually want that line to be flat. But the problem is, is that right now it's at an angle and right now in our top view, it's not um, oriented towards us. Okay, so we need to do a couple of things. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to um, turn on my snaps. And if your snaps aren't showing up, if you don't have this snaps panel here, go to Tools, Object Snap, and then check Persistent O Snap Dialog. That's going to um, turn that on for you. Okay. All I want is the end snap. You can turn everything else off. Just click end snap. And I'm going to use the Orient tool. So O R uh, I N T Orient. Click the first point and then the last point, and then basically click somewhere nearby. And holding Shift, okay, create. It's a orthogonal snap, right? It's going to create uh, create a uh, horizontal line. And so that's going to reorient that to a flat. Um, horizontal orientation. And then the other thing we need to do is if you go into a side view, like the right view, we actually need to rotate that piece. So I'm going to open up multiple views here just so you can see. So the top view is the one I care about because I want to export my line out of the top view. Stop that from flashing there. Okay. Um, so I'm going to pick my line and I'm going to go rotate. And the center of rotation is, you know, can, can be a point, um, you know, basically near, you don't have to snap to it. Um, holding shift, you want to, this is the angle that it starts at, so you're going to hold shift because it's going to be a 90 degree angle, and then you want to give it this, the second reference point, so holding shift again, make that angle horizontal, and then click, and you can see there in my top viewport, I've reoriented that line to um, face the camera, okay? And then whenever you want to export a line, right, you can select the lines that you want to export, go to File, Export Selected, and then on my desktop, uh, I can save it as Adobe Illustrator, and I can say, like, you know, my contour. Okay. And um, 
snapshot of the current view. It's in the view, and I've got it selected. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And if I go into Illustrator, I can open up that line. And there's my line. And if I if I look at it, you can see all the points. So it's actually gra grabbing all that data out of Illustrator, I mean, out of um, <clears throat> Rhinoceros. And I can, you know, do different things to that line. Okay, so I could go in and I could change the line weight. You know, all the things that we talked about. Okay, that's where it begins to become part of our diagrams. Okay, um, one thing that uh, I'm going to delete this is problematic about this is that, you know, this is kind of boring actually. I'm going to turn the site back on with show. Um, if we look at our site, and we looked at, you know, that, that contour it really didn't uh, have a lot of landmarks on it, like it was just a solid line. We didn't have any reading um, of the roads, which might be helpful, or of any other landmarks, uh, like the, the, the stream or the buildings, you know, things that would show up um, in a section, okay, right? Do have sectional qualities. Buildings kind of stick out. The roads are kind of in size. The stream is going to be in size. Those things can help us understand it, and they're also part of the sectional qualities. How do we get those into our site model, okay? And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn these off for now. I'm going to focus on the stream. So I'm turning on the stream layer, and I'm actually going to, yeah, that's fine. And I've got my site layer, and I'm going to turn off my roads. So double click make that current, and turn off roads, and actually I'm going to turn off the site. So I'm going to focus on the stream. And the stream is a set of lines that came in from AutoCAD, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into some geometry that I'm going to um, cut into our site with. So I'm going to look at it and click on it. You can see actually that here, these aren't really uh, part of the same line. This is a separate line. That's, that's probably okay. Um, but I need to do some adjustments to this to make this some, I need to make this into a solid piece of geometry. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to join, you know, these together. So now they're one curve. That's good. And then I'm going to offset these because I want to make them um, a double line. Right now they're a single line, so I go offset. And I'm going to, I'm going to offset these. I'm going to use the both sides switch. So now I'm going to offset in two directions. And the distance for them, um, let's maybe make it two foot. Maybe it's a four-foot creek. Um, you you know the site better than I do. Um, maybe it's three foot, so three. And that's going to create, so it's going to be a six-foot long uh, piece because it's going to be uh, three foot in each direction. Um, those are the settings. And then when I click, it's going to create that offset. And so I can delete the uh, the, the original line. And again, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here. So click that. And to start the same command that you uh, had been using, you just press Enter. So it's actually restarts offset, just like AutoCAD. Um, again, both sides, distance is the same. Press enter. Uh, that didn't seem to do anything. <laughs> Let's try it again. Um, both sides. Yeah, okay. Then delete the um, original line again. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim these. So select everything. Uh, Say trim, select the cutting objects. Okay, fine, press enter. You can also right click if it asks you to press enter, right click, uh, finishes it, and then select the object to trim. So trim, 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 and then let's join those together. Okay, so now I got three curves. And then lastly, um, we need to make this a solid, it needs to be a closed uh, curve. So I'm going to go in with the line tool and draw some lines. I'll finish that off. And up here, <clears throat> draw some lines, and then lastly, snap to some. And I'm using uh, the end snaps to do all this. Just turn off. I don't need that. And then I'm going to grab everything <clears throat> and join it. And I've got one closed curve. Perfect. Let's turn the site back on. And uh, so the problem is, right, is that you know the site is has has. Um, curves, it's a surface that has changes in 3D, we need to, to get this um, curve into position so that we can um, basically trim the surface or split the surface. Okay, so I'm going to do a projected curve. Remember, just like in the example um, that um, 
I showed you guys before when we when we cut the site, we actually trimmed the site with that uh, cut line. Remember that? We're gonna do the same thing here, the same idea. So we're gonna go project curve to project is our um, creek. Enter one done. Okay, right click, and then select services, poly services, and meshes to project. That's our site. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Let's take a look in perspective. And in fact, it's been projected. And I used this switch when I when I projected it that would um, remove the original curve. Let's go back. You need a project in top view, by the way. Don't you know it's in order for the cookie cutter function to work, you need to be projecting in the right plane, and that's the top view. Let's undo project here. Um, project. Yeah, you want to check the delete input. Okay, otherwise you're going to have to go back and remove that piece, and that's kind of cumbersome. Um, just one more step. So make sure that that's checked. Delete input is yes. If it says no, click it and it'll go yes. Okay, select um, surface to project to. Crunch, crunch. Okay. Let's go into perspective view again. Now we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to use that to split the... Um, surface. So we'll say split, and the object to split is the terrain, and the cutting object is our, um, actually, yeah, the cutting object is our, our curves. Make sure to pick, you know, choose all of those. Okay, and then let's go ahead and press enter, and it's going to crunch, and then Let's look at, yeah, so the surface is actually one, it's all one piece. Okay, so select that surface, and then let's go ahead and extrude surface, extrude SRF, not curve, because we're actually extruding the surface. And we want to make sure that cap yes is checked and delete input is checked. Okay, so that's gonna remove the original surface and it's gonna cap it, which means it's gonna create um, a top and a bottom piece. If you don't have that checked, it's not gonna do that. And we want to extrude it, I want to extrude it, I'm gonna say negative three, whatever the depth of that creek is. And I know it's different uh, across the range of it, but we just wanna get that into the topography so that we can cut a section of it. So negative three feet is fine. Um, you can see that that actually creates that surface. Okay. And then the last piece of this is to take that surface, explode it so that we get, you know, pieces of it, <clears throat> and then choose the top of that and delete it. And now we've got our creek. Okay. And then let's go ahead and select everything and join it together again. And it's going to crunch for a little bit. And now it's all gray. Okay. And this is important because, okay, now we're going to take a section of it and choose the surface, draw a line across it, and look at that. So it actually shows us that there's a creek in there. And you can do this technique with roads, you can do this technique um, with, you know, plots, like whatever you want to show up topologically, uh, you know, whatever you think is important should be incised, okay? And um, you can do this with buildings by taking the footprint of the building and extruding it up, right? So project that onto the surface and then extrude each one up to the height that it wants to be. Um, that's one way to do it, uh, and then uh, you can kind of add it to the surface that way. Um, so that's that's also useful. Actually, let's uh, let's quick look at a building, uh, just as an example here. Um, turn on buildings here. So let's go to top view. Okay, so um, buildings are kind of another beast. Uh, I have a technique that I use that um, works pretty well. Um, so I'm going to take the take the flat curves on my buildings layer and project one of them. So I'm going to project this curve onto the surface. And if I go back, and don't don't use the setting that that erases it. 
Okay, so let's let's go back actually. Make sure you do that. Project. Delete input, no. Okay. And uh, project that onto the surface. This is important. Okay. So what you get is you get a line that's that's on that surface, and then you have <clears throat> your uh, let's go to wireframe here. Your actual flat piece. And then what I'm gonna do is um extrude curve on the original so it you get straight up and down. And um Cap yes, delete input yes, and the extrusion distance is going to be whatever the height of that building is. So if this is like um, 15 foot tall, so just type in 15 foot, okay. Then you have that geometry. You're going to say move, vertical yes. You're going to grab the lowest piece of it, like whatever the lowest uh, vertex is on the site, so like this corner, and I'm going to move it down so that it sits there on the site, okay. And that gives us this on the site, okay. Um, if the height's like different, you know, if if it's actually ten foot, but maybe ten foot from another point, you're gonna have to figure out the math for that. But but this way, it's at least situated in into the site, uh, and you get a um, a realistic height. Okay, um, use your judgment with that. But that's that's a trick that I found that uh, that works pretty well. And go ahead and leave that as a as an object. Um, you can always trim it later uh, when you cut your section. So if I go, um, and then I'm gonna delete that curve. I don't need it anymore. So it is actually sitting in the site. It's not a really good craft, but um, it'll work when you take a section. So let's say um, section. So it says select objects for sections. So I need to pick everything that I want to take a section of. I want to include in that section. I need to select. So I'm going to select my site with my um, stream cutout, and I'm going to select a building. Okay, anything that's going to be in there. So I might need to have to just sweep everything. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, okay, so I've got my objects, and now I'm going to do the start, start of the section. So I'm going to draw a line from the building uh, through here. Oops, a little off there. Um, it's hard to do. This is why you don't do things in perspective. Um, I'm going to do it here, through here, okay. And then let's see what that, what that generated there. Let's go to perspective. Yeah, and so, you know, I've got my line, it goes through the building, and it goes through the ravine, and then I can always go in in um, AutoCAD or in Illustrator or whatever and turn this up, but at least I've got that building now in there um, as part of my section. Okay, so um, there's that piece. <clears throat> the last thing that uh, I want to talk about, so now you can, get, you can get buildings and you can get roads and things, and then the last piece I want to talk about this is uh, how do you cut multiple sections of things so sometimes we you know we've seen those examples uh, from the uh, PowerPoint slides where um, they do an entire city and so you know like slices of something through so how do you how do you do that and avoid having to just keep you know cutting sections like one after the other um, there's actually a tool called contour so go contour And then you can select objects. So again, if you have a building, you would actually want to uh, select that. Okay. Um, and uh, any object that you want to cut. So so geometry. Don't cut um, 2D lines that because you'll just end up with a bunch of points, and you don't want that. Um, this is fine. Select objects. So we have the site. And then you want to click. Um, you want to click range. And then click one direction, and then a perpendicular line, you know, in the direction that you want to make contours. And then give us the distance between contours. And in this case, I'm going to do the big sites, so maybe 100 foot between contours. Don't do a small number because it's really going to generate a lot, and that's going to create all those contours. Now, it's a good idea once you've done that to go ahead and group them together. Just type in group, okay, and then you can um, kind of move that aside as one unit. Okay, um, let's go ahead and move these on to our sections layer, and let's go ahead and turn off um, the other geometry that we have. Huh. That's all kind of ended up. Okay, so we've got this. Now, <clears throat> same procedure as last time uh, to start with. We're going to orient with our snap turned on. Snap from one end. The other, hold shift, click, and now you're horizontal. And then let's go 
to the right side view, and let's rotate them. So up, and then make them horizontal. Okay, but we've run into a problem here. So now we've got all these contours, but look at our top view, they're all kind of stacked together. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is just click, I mean, you're going to make a selection, you're going to ungroup them, and then you're going to sweep this one, and holding down shift, you're going to move it, which means you, you hold the mouse on it and, uh, and just pull, move, select, move, and actually I'll show you what's happening here. So you can see that these are being sort of distributed um, into position. Just kind of, so I'm just kind of pulling them apart um, in that axis. Make sure you select everything, otherwise you can end up with some extra pieces there. Okay, and so I can see my see my creek. You can you can arrange these. You you can move them uh, left and right. You know if you oh, sorry, you know select all these. You know if you want to you know like align them or whatever. But this is how you can begin to arrange them. You might actually want to go ahead and just do join. Yeah, because you might get some extra pieces. These aren't maybe joined together, and so now they're all one unit. That might be helpful. Okay, so you've got these, and you know you can kind of move them up and down in the top view if you'd like. So however you want to arrange them, and then you can see that they're not really like lined up um, at all. Uh, so we'll select them in top view, and then we'll go ahead and say transform, project to C plane. So it's going to be projected to the coordinate plane, to the um, construction plane. And it says delete input objects, yes. And now they're all flat. Okay, so we just just kind of flatten them out. We need to do that because uh, so we can export them flat to um, Illustrator. Um, otherwise, what you're going to see is going to be uh, distorted, and you want these to be you know two dimensional. You don't want them to be um, a three dimensional um, distortion. Okay, so then you go in and say export selected. Okay, let's just go ahead and save over our thing. Place it. Snapshot is fine. These are all in the viewport, and I'm selected in top view. Okay. And let's go ahead and close this one. And now let's go ahead and open that back up again. And there are all my contours. Okay, so that's a good collection of contours. And the scale, yeah, thinner weight is probably going to be better. So, anyway, that's how you can kind of get landmarks into it. And, uh, and again, you could get, um, if you have a house, let's say you brought one in, it might look like something sticking out in yours, okay? You can select the lines, and, um, you know, you could, you could do this in AutoCAD, or you can do this in, um, in, in Rhino as a uh, trim, that's probably easier. But you can also go into Pathfinder, um, and you can do a trim as well, so divide, oops, that's not what I wanted to do, uh, trim. Actually, let's. Uh, it's easier to do it. it. Seems like it's easier to do it in um, Rhino. So let's just assume that you made these uh, contours and they happen to contain some buildings in them. You can just go in and, and um, maximize this. Open up the trim command and uh, select your things, and then you can trim these out. Just make sure that you're going as a join make them all one again. Okay. So again, um, seems to be some issue with this in uh, Illustrator, so I'm just going to say do it in Rhinoceros. Okay. It seems to be much easier to do it that way. It's possible, but something's uh, not working right now. So well, um, yeah, do your editing in Rhinoceros and then um, export it. So you can get your roads and your streams and your buildings, and that's going to create um, a nice a nice section for you. You know, another thing is, um, if you need to, you could actually make these into um, solids, uh, or like like sections by, you know, offsetting uh, 
horizontal line. By some, you know, it needs to be the same. You have to be consistent in how you do it, but, and then you can kind of drop a vertical line and then just trim these or fill with them, just like AutoCAD. So you could begin to make these into and then join these together. You can do quite a bit of vector editing, actually, like you might in AutoCAD. You can do this in um, in Rhinoceros, and then you could fill that in when you get to uh, to Illustrator. Okay, you could draw this in Illustrator too. Take a take a pen tool and um, start on the open end, and then draw and then draw this together. Okay, so um, that's just a quick a quick idea. There are lots of ways to do this, and we might even talk about more of this next week, but. Um, that's how to take um, a two-dimensional section from a three-dimensional Tobo file. Um, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Thanks. Bye.